uh, one of the things I did is um, I uh, I made it so that these line numbers get stuck on the side, even if you scroll, uh, your scroll bar is going to the right. Um, oh, nice. So, uh, which will really help with the timeline because the lines in the timeline can be really long. So you often have to scroll all the way over, like how many, look how many indentations there are. So uh -huh. even even when you scroll over, you can still see the line numbers, and nice. and that's helpful. Um, and that oh, that there's also this drop down. First of all, that okay. will allow you to select a different file, okay, a different code file to view. Mm -hmm. now, once I implemented that. Um, because the point of it is you want to be able to jump around anywhere you want. So like, uh -huh. like I, I know that the code is going to hit my stack pane code at some point. Uh -huh. And I just want to go jump there. So what you do is like, oh, go to the stack pane. And I click there. It, it either click or uh, right click. Right click means reverse time until you hit that line. And normal, uh -huh. cl normal click means go forward until you hit that line, right? So you can... Mm -hmm. You can just do one of the two to hit this line, and mm. and and then you can start stepping through the code like you normally would. Mm -hmm. And and uh, but one of the things that I wanted is a visual indication of whether a line ever got hit, and uh -huh. and that is shown the white lines have been hit at least once, whereas the red lines have not. Oh, nice. So that's that, very helpful. <laughs> yeah, so so there's that. Um and then very soon I found that um this oh there there's some performance problems that I had to address in terms of sometimes the switching of files was slow because the, of this new requirement. Uh, I find mm -hmm. an okay way I, I added some database indexes which made this query faster, but also made mm -hmm. the generation of the data slower. So at the moment I have the indexes, uh, but I don't know what would be a better solution. So I'm, I'm still gonna think about that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, I, so those are the big features other than the next thing, which I've been talking to you excitedly, which is the uh, launch bar, the, okay. the, la the launch bar. <laughs> so, oh. um, so you can go to like, Stack pane. This is obviously is stolen from any of the popular editors nowadays. Have this thing where you do Command P, and mm -hmm. you have this search bar, and you type in the name of the file. But but you don't even have to type it right. Like if like uh, maybe you do STG, you misspelled string, but string is still gonna show up. So this is okay. this is a fuzzy search, and and also another thing is, um, you can be very sloppy with your typing. Two words. Uh huh. Like I can I can just write abbreviated versions of the words jammed together, R W S R, uh -huh. and I'll find a raw search. That's the sequence that you talked about. Yeah, uh, it's a string subsequence, um, and uh -huh. we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that when we when we get to how this stuff works. Uh, but mm -hmm. but basically, I reverse engineered this feature, so I have a I have this now. Now it's very quick to like I I want to go to the cache. I jump to the cache, mm -hmm. and I can start you know, jumping to the lines that are in the cache implementation and see, yes. and see, you know, and again, one, one trick you can use with a debugger like this is you can jump to a line and then you figure out who called me. You just go backwards outside and now you know mm -hmm. who, who called me. Um, you, you, yeah, I mean, so, um, so you can jump to a file like, 
uh, you can jump to H box, for example. You could also jump to a, oh, this is jump to step. You could also jump to a function. So I want to jump to the layout function. And, and oh. now, now there's a lot of layout functions. Okay. And, and that's unfortunate. So uh, I, I put this, the file name next to it to let oh. you distinguish. Turns out there's three different layout functions in window because in the window file, I put three separate components in there. Oh, okay. Because the window has a title bar and, mm -hmm. and also the window border is another component and both of them are used by the window. Um, I could oh. split them up, but this, you know, there's some confusion there potentially. Um, but I, I guess one enhancement I probably want to do is allow this the fuzzy search typing to also be matching on the file name as well. Like maybe I can say layout scroll view scroll. Uh, and then I'll, I'll get the layout for just the scroll view. Uh, uh -huh. I, I, I know that I know that uh, VS Code does that. Um, so I think that's possible. Uh, it, it does require the code to do more work. Mm -hmm. um, so you can jump to files, jump to functions, um, like um, even a class, uh, uh, least recently used cache. So that, that's the least recently used cache okay. that you yeah. made. So um, you could also jump to a, um, you, could you could type in a specific uh, snapshot number and it'll jump there. So I don't know. Uh, 456 or something and, and then I'll jump there this is 456 and the way you can the way you can see that this is 456 is by going to the timeline this is uh, okay. snapshot number 456 nice so so those are the jumping around features or navigation features mm -hmm. uh, yeah I think that's mostly what I did uh, since last time there's a whole bunch of bugs that I'm going to need to solve. For example, um, if you currently the drop downs don't close when you click away, so that's oh. kind of a problem. Um, mm -hmm. Like like this like this one, they don't close when you click away. You can hit escape to get it to close, but clicking mm -hmm. away doesn't close it, and uh, it it's not exactly straightforward to make that happen right now. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm thinking about how to fix that. Um, so that's like a short term goal. Um, long term goal wise, the things I'm really interested, in, it goes back to the visualization ideas that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this timeline is one of those concepts we talked about and we still mm -hmm. are I mean, it, it, it can be useful, but not immediately useful in most cases, just because there's too much data. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe ways of enhancing this, like one thing, uh, one thing I already done is like, I, I add a little label as to which file this line is coming from um, mm -hmm. right here. And, uh, and if, it, if it changed files like here, it changed file from util.py to frozen import lib bootstrap. Mm -hmm. Then it, it shows you, hey, it changed. And then it came mm -hmm. back to util.py over here. That's probably mm -hmm. not the best indicator, but it, it was like an easy fix that I put in. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there's a better way to indicate, like look, scrolling through this timeline, where you are in the code, maybe with combination of labeling and color coding. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe it allow you to expand and collapse. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think there's a way to, to make it good. I just don't know what it is yet. And, and also mm -hmm. putting, putting that, um, that call graph in here as well, uh, which currently I haven't done. Uh, it's, it's the C calls thing. Oh, uh, I remember that. Like something like that, like <laughs> the, the call graph. Actually, when I was working on this um, the fuzzy search functionality, uh, this call graph thing was very helpful in helping me debug the thing. 
Um, I, I just use that mostly <laughs> to debug my algorithm. Um, mm. So I, I think this can be really useful. And, and again, it, it probably can be enhanced in various ways. Like we, we need to find a best way to present this information. Um, but um, another future goal is to have Oh, the, the the object lifetime thing, where, oh, yeah, where I can say, hey, show me the last time this root element got mutated, something like that, or, or even this, show me the last time that, or the next time that this object got mutated. Um, yeah, that would be. Really yeah. Oh, and another idea I have in the farther down in the horizon is uh, hierarchical scroll bars, which which comes from comes from um that timeline book that i showed you uh -huh. um, where it has like multiple multiple scales of timeline right uh -huh. um, like you have a scroll bar here uh -huh. um and, and basically this is saying hey this range is a zoom in of this section mm -hmm. in the overall timeline right mm -hmm. but, but sometimes you get a situation where well actually it's not hard to get that situation now because if you just look at the timeline mm -hmm. you don't see a knob right you don't see a knob because it's too small to be seen mm -hmm. um i i i need to i need to make it show up anyway like maybe just make it the smallest it can be is one um i need to make it show up anyway even if it's, if it's too small to be seen but my mm -hmm. my point is we could have a hierarchical timeline where where maybe maybe the knob is really small here mm -hmm. um, but in reality um you know when when the knob is really small this the shown range is probably not even that much it's probably like only that much right only, mm -hmm. only this little bit right and, and if that's the case what i want to do is have a second scroll bar that would be like that where this range maps to this range mm -hmm. and then this range maps to this range but how do you know how many layers of scroll bar to have uh we, we have enough scroll bars when it is true that like everything can fit basically oh, when, okay. when, when, when this range correctly reflects this this outer okay range that is visible and this and this range correctly reflects this range and so and if we need even more scroll bars we'll have even more scroll bars mm -hmm. it's kind of like google map but google map doesn't have a scroll bar because you don't use scroll bar to scroll but that's like the idea you have like a mm. very small range on your phone but there's actually a lot so if you zoom in i mean zoom out then you get a bigger scroll area well move area yeah 